Another tofu drag. Inflatable castle collapse in Nanjing Park, multiple trapped, children's cries fill the air. Jiangsu, woman finds hidden cameras in three consecutive hotel rooms. Powerful typhoon Koinu approaches China. Billions of Chinese yuan pour into Hong Kong, suspected massive capital outflow. Thousands of party branches can't save Evergrande, is this a warning for Xi Jinping? It's all covered in today's China Truths. Another tofu drag. Inflatable castle collapse in Nanjing Park, multiple trapped, children's cries fill the air. On October 5th, in Nanjing, Jiangsu, an inflatable castle in a theme park suddenly collapsed, resulting in several children being trapped underneath. Videos circulating online depict the scene in utter disorder, with the inflatable castle leaning to one side and the sounds of children crying from within. Parents at the scene were extremely anxious. A father, in a panicked state, used a key to cut open the castle's fabric to rescue his child. Fortunately, no children were injured during the entire incident, they were merely frightened. According to reports from mainland media, staff at the Mandmangda Parent Child Park mentioned that they reviewed the surveillance footage and discovered that an adult had entered, potentially leading to the collapse of the inflatable castle. Commenting on this issue, Chinese netizens expressed their disbelief, questioning whether the castle collapsed solely due to one adult entering. Can't it withstand the weight of a single adult? They also raised concerns about the potential danger for multiple children and advocated for the prohibition of inflatable castles, while also inquiring about the number of recent accidents. Jiangsu, woman finds hidden cameras in three consecutive hotel rooms. According to reports from mainland media, on October 3, a group of five women from mainland China, including Ms. Liu and her companions, went on vacation and checked into the Z Hotel on Huazhong Road, Ganyu District, Liangyungang. They're shocked to discover these things. In a video circulating online, Ms. Liu explained that when they returned to the hotel at night, one of her friends, who was in a different room, turned off the lights after taking a shower and suddenly noticed a light source inside the air conditioning vent. Upon closer inspection, they were shocked to find a hidden camera inside. Subsequently, another camera was discovered in the air conditioning vent of Ms. Liu's room. After reporting the incident to the police, the officers advised them to check out and refunded their room fees. Ms. Liu and her companions immediately packed their belongings. She also informed the guests in the neighboring room about the incident, and her friend inspected the room, which resulted in the discovery of another hidden camera in the air conditioning vent. Later, this hotel guest was also shocked and chose to report the incident to the police. On the evening of October 4, the hotel responded, stating that they had reported the incidents to the police, and law enforcement had initiated an investigation. Commenting on the incident, Lucien, a writer, cartoonist, and Weibo influencer, believes that if hidden cameras were discovered in three consecutive rooms, it's possible that every room in this hotel might have hidden cameras. This discovery has stirred the public. Hey Bulin, a Weibo influencer, expressed nervousness, I'm currently staying in a themed hotel, what should I do? I've been here for almost two months. Could everything I've done in my room have been recorded? Some netizens suggest that there should be new regulations requiring hotels to inspect every room for hidden cameras in the future. A full-time lawyer in mainland China stated that this behavior is illegal and not only violates human rights but may also constitute a criminal offense. In this case, if a third party installed the hidden cameras, the management should provide evidence that they fulfilled their security obligations. In the absence of such evidence, the hotel should assume supplementary responsibility. If the hotel installed the hidden cameras, it would involve both criminal and civil liabilities. Powerful Typhoon Koinu Approaches China According to reports from the Global Network, this year's 14th typhoon, Koinu, reached the category of a strong typhoon and made landfall in Taiwan on October 5. 
It is predicted that Koinu will move in a west-northwest direction at a speed of about 10 km per hour, approaching and possibly brushing past the eastern coastal areas of Guangdong around October 7. According to reports from Southeast Net, Typhoon Koinu is expected to have a significant impact on the southeastern sea areas of China, including Fujian, Guangdong, and Taiwan, bringing strong winds and heavy rain. As a result, many regions have issued notices regarding the temporary closure of scenic areas, suspension of ferry services, cessation of performances, and evacuation instructions. In Fuzhou City, elderly, young, and vulnerable individuals must evacuate ashore by 6 p.m. on October 3, and laborers must evacuate by 6 p.m. on October 4. At the same time, flights in the typhoon-affected area have also been suspended starting from October 6. Due to the impact of Typhoon Koinu, the Shantou Municipal Education Bureau issued an urgent notice that all nurseries, kindergartens, primary and secondary schools, and extracurricular education and training institutions in the city will suspend classes starting from October 6. In response to Typhoon Koinu, the Fujian Provincial Flood Control and Typhoon Prevention Command decided to elevate the Typhoon Emergency Response Level to Level 3 on October 3. The Guangdong Provincial Flood Control Headquarters raised the Typhoon Preparedness Level from Level 4 to Level 3. In response, Shantou, a city in Guangdong, also upgraded the Typhoon Yellow Warning. With the arrival of Typhoon Koinu, some mainland netizens expressed their concerns, saying, this year, the typhoons just won't stop. Billions of Chinese yuan pour into Hong Kong, suspected massive capital outflow. Statistical data reveals that in August, a substantial influx of Chinese yuan, RMB, poured into Hong Kong, resulting in the total RMB deposits in Hong Kong approaching nearly 1 trillion yuan. Conversely, Hong Kong's foreign exchange reserves, utilized to bolster the stability of the Hong Kong dollar exchange rate, dwindled by 35.8 billion Hong Kong dollars, approximately 4.57 billion US dollars, in August. An analysis pointed out that Hong Kong funds are flowing out, and the scale is substantial. Hong Kong stands as the largest offshore RMB settlement market, encompassing approximately 70% of offshore RMB settlements. Due to offshore RMB operating beyond the regulatory framework of the People's Bank of China and being subject to currency exchange with foreign currencies, it shapes offshore exchange rates. This, in turn, can exert varying degrees of influence on onshore RMB exchange rates. An extensive outflow of RMB is expected to exert pressure on the People's Bank of China's control over the RMB exchange rate. Recent developments have witnessed a substantial number of mainland Chinese residents opening bank accounts in Hong Kong. On the morning of September 7, at 8 o'clock, a lengthy queue of mainland tourists had already formed outside the Bank of China branch in Central Plaza. Ms. Chu, hailing from Xi'an, explicitly mentioned that she visited Hong Kong with the specific intent of opening an account, hoping to secure higher interest rates by depositing her funds in Hong Kong banks. On this occasion, she plans to deposit 100,000 Hong Kong dollars, approximately 12,800 US dollars. Ms. Zhu states, currently, the economic environment in mainland China is poor. We should not wait and watch domestically. We should take action, so I decided to exchange my money into other currencies. She also revealed that Chinese individuals coming to Hong Kong can carry 20,000 renminbi, approximately 2,780 US dollars, in cash per person each time across customs. People use this ant moving house method to take their RMB out of the country. Senior Hong Kong banker Wu Mingda believes that the outflow of funds from mainland Chinese residents to Hong Kong is inevitably facilitated by the involvement and selective approval of Chinese Communist Party officials, effectively granting a green light. Economic analyst Luo Jiatsong predicts that the circulation of funds between mainland China and Hong Kong will tighten in the future, making it more difficult to transfer money overseas. Furthermore, data from the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, SWIFT, reveals that in August, the RMB's international settlement payment share increased from 3.06% in July to 3.47%, reaching a record high and ranking fifth. 
The gap between the RMB and the Japanese yen, which ranks fourth with 3.68%, has significantly narrowed. On the other hand, according to the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, as of August 31, the total assets of foreign exchange funds were 3,975.7 billion Hong Kong dollars, approximately 50.8 billion US dollars, a decrease of 35.8 billion Hong Kong dollars, approximately 4.57 billion US dollars, from the end of July. Among these, foreign currency assets decreased by 22.8 billion Hong Kong dollars, approximately 2.91 billion US dollars, and Hong Kong dollar assets decreased by 13 billion Hong Kong dollars, approximately 1.65 billion US dollars. Seasoned financial expert Wang Jian analyzed that while a substantial amount of RMB flowed into Hong Kong, data from the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, SWIFT, for August showed a record increase in RMB settlement payments amid a slump in China's foreign trade. Additionally, Hong Kong's foreign exchange funds decreased, indicating that there is no doubt that Hong Kong's funds are flowing out, and the scale of the outflow is significant. Thousands of party branches can't save Evergrande, is this a warning for Xi Jinping? In recent years, the CCP has strengthened its requirements for companies to establish party branches, and in some cases, even set up people's armed departments. Notably, Chinese real estate giant Evergrande Group has over a thousand party branches within the company. However, with the massive debt and unfinished real estate projects that have plunged the firm into a deep financial crisis, Chinese citizens can't help but question, who is Evergrande's real backer? Under the CCP system in China, any department or unit, including enterprises, rural areas, government agencies, schools, research institutes, street communities, social organizations, etc., that has at least three party members, should establish a party branch. Those with 50 or more formal party members can establish a party committee, and units with 100 or more party members can set up grassroots party committees. Since Xi Jinping took office as general secretary of the CCP at the end of 2012, he has increased efforts to establish party organizations within enterprises, including state-owned enterprises, private enterprises, and even foreign enterprises. Evergrande Group, as mentioned above, has over a thousand party branches within the company. According to information on Evergrande Group's official website, the company established a party committee in August 2002, becoming the first non-state-owned enterprise in Guangzhou to have a party committee. Su Jiayin, chairman of the board, has been the party secretary for over 20 years. Evergrande Group's party committee has grown from its initial six party branches with just over 100 party members to the current 38 party committees, 27 party general branches, and 1,133 party branches, overseeing 12,075 party members, achieving 100% coverage of grassroots party organizations. The enterprise must integrate the implementation of the party's lines, principles, and policies into production, operation, management, and business, making party building work truly effective and fruitful. Su Jiayin even publicly stated, everything I have and everything Evergrande has, all come from the party. Evergrande Group achieved remarkable success within just 20 years, entering the Fortune Global 500 list in 2016 and ranking 152nd in 2020, which rapidly elevated both Evergrande and Su Jiayin to fame. However, by September 2021, Evergrande Group was deeply embroiled in a debt crisis, owing suppliers, creditors, and investors a total of 19.665 trillion yuan, equivalent to 2% of China's mainland GDP in 2020. As of the end of 2022, the total liabilities reached 2.44 trillion yuan. Party branches have become a trending topic. Is the CCP undermining itself? So, with the current issues facing Su Jiayin of Evergrande, it naturally raises questions from the public. Did the party branches fail to supervise Su Jiayin's illegal and criminal activities? In response to these questions, current affairs commentator Kai Shinkuin analyzed that top state-owned and private enterprises in China's real estate sector have very close relationships with officials at various levels of the party and government. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to acquire land, projects, or funding. 
Su Jiayin, as an ordinary citizen, clearly had backing behind him, allowing him to ride the high-speed development train of reform and opening up. However, due to the immense pressure on the Chinese government in recent years, they ultimately had to abandon Evergrande. However, Kai Shinkuen pointed out, the problems accumulated in China's real estate sector are too extensive for the government to resolve in isolation. Just the hundreds of billions of dollars in external debt can deplete China's foreign exchange reserves. The Evergrande crisis is no longer a problem that the central government can fully resolve through the Anbang, a Chinese insurance group, or HNA models. The debt created by real estate companies will affect banks, local governments, and foreign funds that have been investing in China over the past few years. This kind of default phenomenon will quickly spread to various sectors in China. Veteran media personality Tang Hao agreed with commentator Kai Shinkuen and added that the CCP views Su Jiayin's filing for bankruptcy protection overseas as a betrayal of the party. So they simply scapegoated him along with other entrepreneurs facing problems. It's worth mentioning that independent scholar Wu Zuolai had previously disclosed in an article on X that if Su Jiayin indeed exposes the corrupt interest groups, hundreds, if not thousands, of high-ranking officials at the bureau level and above, as well as their family members, would become entangled. If key personnel under his leadership participate in reporting and exposing, it's likely that even more government and banking officials at the department and division levels would end up behind bars. Therefore, after Su Jiayin is imprisoned, there will likely be numerous officials prepared to flee. Many netizens also commented, stating, this proves that the Chinese Communist Party is essentially engaged in deception, despite having such a vast and well-established party organization, it couldn't prevent rampant greed and corruption, leading to significant losses for the nation and its people. Evergrande Group reflects the current state of Chinese politics. Su Jiayin is a CCP member and the secretary of the Evergrande Party Committee. The banks are state-owned and fall under Communist Party leadership. Corruption occurs under the auspices of the Communist Party. As long as the Chinese Communist Party exists, corruption will persist. According to NTD TV, the fate of Evergrande and Su Jiayin appears to mirror Xi Jinping's fate of preserving the party. Thousands of party branches couldn't save Evergrande, similarly, Xi Jinping, who seeks to preserve his power through the party, may face an end. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.